Our next speaker is uh, Betty Ann Garrick. Uh, Betty Ann has been the coordinator of Autism Kamloops for over 15 years now, providing information and support for families who have children with autism in the region around Kamloops. Um, Betty Ann's also concerned about the needs of adults with autism. Uh, Betty Ann has uh, four sons and a daughter, and one of her four sons is, was diagnosed with autism. He's now a young adult, and he's working very successfully with adults and children with special needs. Betty Ann. Thank you. Deborah was a huge resource for me. A year after my son was finally diagnosed, I joined her in a um, facilitator training group and never looked back. I've been supporting members in my community and around the province for over 15 years and I'm passionate about what I do and um, lots of, of my time is without pay and will continue to do that just because I know the need is there. I had uh, started my journey 30 years ago with my stepdaughter who is fetal alcohol syndrome then followed by two sons with um, developmental disabilities, then the, then along came autism, and it took six years to get that child identified. And that is still a problem today for families that I like to say to them, you know, not all professionals are all that professional. And we are all human, and we all make mistakes, and there are some pediatricians that truly understand this invisible disorder, and those that don't. And I like to highlight to families seeking um, a diagnosis or finding out what's going on in their child or family that, you know, there's these pediatricians in our community that really get it, and I highly recommend, you know, don't waste your time over there, go here. I wish that information could be more readily available to all general practitioners so that they, you know, can avoid that one to four year waste of time. Uh, going back through professionals who truly don't understand it or are just quite willing to say those things. He's just a boy, or like I was told, you have too many boys. Um, <laughs> but I had four older brothers. I didn't feel I had too many boys. I really understood boys, but this particular one was a bit challenging in that he wasn't like the other three at all. And today he is better than the other three. <laughs> Truth be told, he is an amazing young man that has come leaps and bounds. I cannot believe that was the same child um, way back, you know, being thrown out of kindergarten, being told he couldn't attend regular school, that he would have to be in a behavior intervention class and, and no, he won't be getting a spelling list because he has autism, why bother? And I remember saying to that teacher, well, I'm gonna let you live, but don't talk like that again. Um, and going forward, I really want him to work in the school district now just so I can rub their nose in the fact that this kid has come a million miles and you know, support would have been great along the way instead of derailing the situation and creating the situations that you know he would have his meltdowns. He was often set up and not, uh, I'm sure it wasn't intentionally, but the lack of understanding about autism, just that's the way it would roll. And you know, so I, you know, like we still have a long ways to go uh, in our communities and uh, yeah, <laughs> but the, the more the, that people are touched by autism, then that information grows. I know that, you know, it's normal, it's very normal. If we don't have or know anyone with that disorder, we don't look into it. And you know, until someone in your family is diagnosed with something, we're obvious, you're usually oblivious to what it is until we research it. So we just need to keep educating one person at a time about this disorder and, and that how there's so much potential in these kids. And we don't ever know what the outcomes are gonna be in the beginning, and so it's, it's a journey that you just don't give up on. Um, too often in, in the rural outlying communities, Kamloops is considered a city, but believe me, we just got a BCBA two years ago. So it's been years of 
of importing professionals, years of trying to get people to understand that uh, the, whole, the whole journey of it. And slowly we're getting there. Unfortunately, these very remote communities are, they have, those families I'm sure have chosen where they live because they don't want to have a neighbor too close. Um, or they're the farmers or the ranchers that we do need to support if you want to have, continue to have food on your table down here. So um, it's always been my irk that too much of the treatment dollars are spent on importing the professionals and paying for their transportation. So whether it's fiber optics that are going to bring that into these smaller communities so that uh, we don't have to pay for the, the transportation of these folks in, that would certainly help. Um, technology has definitely been our friend in the last 10 to 15 years. Um, although having said that, my first, first, when he was first diagnosed, we didn't have a computer. That was still not yet in the homes, certainly not our home. And um, the way I was treated was, it always stuck with me that by learning every, each thing I did for each of my children, I had learned so much that the typical family or parent wouldn't have been picking up that much information. It's usually one kid and when you're done elementary school, you move on and, and you don't need that information anymore. Well, I kept needing it and using it and found that I had learned too much, I had to pay it forward, which is where my passion comes from, just to share what I know and whoever wants to listen, I just keep going if they have <laughs> questions. Um, I have been called uh, Autism 411 or the Queen of Autism in Kamloops and it's uh, kind, but you know, it's, I wish everyone had that knowledge and the ability to share it amongst the community.